Now we're gonna get into a little bit more of a darker subject because what I found that happened in the music during this time, so, you know, most of the time in the Retro Blood, we wanna talk about thrash metal, we wanna talk about rock and roll metal. Um, but, you know, so- sometimes, you know, it's kinda of hard to find some of that. But, you know, me and Allison are both big music fans. Um, Allison, you're probably a little bit more of a For sure. you pro- you probably more of a wider uh, frame music fan than I am, you know, because um, you know when we talk back and forth for different musicians and different groups and different artists that we like, uh, I think you have a little bit more of like a open mind more to to more artists yeah, than I yeah, do. I like that may be true. I mean, I like mm. all kinds of music. I mean, like from jazz to hip hop to metal, I like all kinds of music. Yes, even black metal too. There you go. Um, but th- this, this would be, if we were like going strong during this time, this would definitely be something that would be a shock, uh, to us as well. Even though we are big metal fans, um, this would be a big shock and we definitely, we'd be playing a lot of tracks from this particular artist during this time. Um, because it's such a big artist. Like it's like probably one of the most craziest stories and the story I'm getting to is about, Almost about eleven days uh, before New Year's Eve, Evil dropped was the death of one of the most famous singers of all time, John Lennon, because he died on December eighth, wow, yeah. nineteen eighty. Yeah, I didn't even I didn't even pick up on that until you just mentioned it. But yeah, that's yeah. John Lennon's. The day John Lennon died is almost like a holiday for me. Like I don't talk about it a lot, but it, it's definitely something I commemorate. Um, yeah, I mean, anybody who knows me knows how much I love the Beatles and oh, yeah. how much the the Beatles contributed to music as we know it. I mean, they created music as we know it today for sure. Yeah, I mean, like um, I was saying, just because we're like you know big metal fans, you know, Beatles is not like super hardcore metal, nothing thrash, but they did influence. No. I mean, they definitely had that like rock and roll spirit to them i mean yeah. they they captured a nation i mean there's so much stuff that people talk about with the beatles i mean they were even oh, like yeah. a little controversial for their time as well you know of some yeah. of the songs and some of the stuff they came out with so mm-hmm. definitely pretty we could do a pretty whole crazy. podcast on the beatles for sure i mean we could do a whole different series on the beatles yeah and never run out of stuff to talk about but yeah that was um yeah i mean that was a tragic day i mean you know like that that, that meant a lot to people they um they announced it during monday night football even yeah like it just brought down the commentary team on monday night football they were just like you know uh it's it's if you listen back to that announcement where they're like oh it's like um you know uh we just found out that john lennon died um in the middle of this game and it, like you can just tell it just brings them down and that you know this is these are not music commentary guys it's just uh you know howard cosell and whoever else was doing monday night football at the time but yeah, that's uh, yeah, that did bring me down a little bit, um, uh, you know. But uh, yeah, yeah, John Lennon was a was a brilliant man. He was a genius, and it's sad. It was sad that he died so young, forty years old. Yep. Yeah, pretty crazy. Now, do you want to talk about the the story of the uh, the murder, or what do you think? Yeah, I mean, sure. I mean, um, I mean, yeah. You want me to tell the story? Yeah, I mean, if you know, I got it yeah. up here. But if you know it, you can tell it because I know you're a little bit more of yeah. a Beatle insider than I do. Yeah, I mean, I know quite a bit about it, but if I say anything that's wrong, just, you know, you can correct me. But basically, he was, he had moved to New York City in 1972 or three, and him and he and Yoko Ono had had Sean, their son, and he had basically retired from music a few years before that, maybe five or six years before that, to raise his son. And they were living in the Dakota building in New York City. And John was really, from everything that I can tell, was really open with fans. Like he was very, um, um, uh, very open with people. He would always um, talk to fans if he could. Um, and people would go, you know, people publicly knew that he lived at the Dakota building and they would just stand outside waiting on him to come out. And he would always take pictures and sign autographs, especially if people have been waiting a long time. And um, Yoko had mentioned not long before this, that maybe they should get a bodyguard. And he's like, well, he's like, if they're going to get you, they're going to get you. And all that'll do is cause a bodyguard to get killed too. So on this day, on December the 8th, they had gotten up and gone to, to do a photo shoot. I actually, I think the photo shoot was in their apartment. And um, they, 
um, uh, had left the apartment to get some lunch or something, breakfast or lunch. I can't remember which. And they left and they ran into, um, to, uh, oh, his name escapes me. Oh, it was, uh, Mark, 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 Dave, Mark, David Chapman. Yeah. yeah. So he ran, so Mark, David Chapman was from Texas and he had been living in Hawaii for a while, I believe. And he was a huge Beatles fan, but he had decided that John Lennon had sold out and um, was phony. And he, w- he had been reading um, Catcher in the Rye, which is all about phony people. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of, it's a, something that you read when you're a teenager and, you know, you, you're full of teenage angst and that kind of thing. Um, but he, uh, he, he'd realized, he thought that John Lennon was phony and that he, he wanted to kill John Lennon. But he flew to New York and he'd been there for several days and he met John Lennon earlier in that day in that evening, I believe it was. Um, and he ran into John and he asked John to sign his, uh, his album, his double fantasy album. Cause he had just put out this brand new album after being gone for like five years. And it was like their, their, you know, his, his re-entry into music, I guess. Um, and he met, Mark David Chapman outside Chapman had him sign the the album. And there's a famous picture that somebody else took of Lennon signing Mark David Chapman's album. And then they leave and they go to the recording studio. They record for a few hours and then they come back about 10 30 at night and Chapman's outside still. And then he runs up and shoots John Lennon in the back. Um, and then he was taken to the hospital and he died like an hour later, I believe. Yes. Yeah, definitely a pretty crazy story. I mean, like, I mean, definitely, you know, during this month, I mean, everybody was already been, you know, still shooken up. Um, and there's like, apparently, like, even outside of the hospital where uh, John Lennon was at, um, apparently it was reported that even, like, some Beatles fans committed suicide in front of that hospital as well, well too. So, wow. yeah. So, definitely a. A pretty crazy story and definitely one of the most craziest story in almost the, pretty much the history of the world, I would say, would be like John Lennon dying because, you know, just the the reach to even this day that the uh, the Beatles have and John Lennon himself is it's still going on. Like, it's not going to end. It's just going to be, you know, I, I, I listened to the Beatles when my brother, um, I had to be like in high school and I was going through like a very like, Nine Inch Nail, Marilyn Manson phase, you know what I mean? Like during that, yeah. like kind of like that like later 90s phase and everything. And yeah. I remember my brother is the one that got me into those bands, like, you know, Fear Factory, all those type of bands. And then next thing I know, like the next year or something, my brother just totally switched. He went from listening to all this Nine Inch Nail, Marilyn Manson to Beatles, like only Beatles all the time. And I was like, what the hell's going on, man? You listen to all these Beatles and stuff. Cause I wasn't like super familiar with the Beatles and stuff. I knew, I knew of them and stuff. And he's like, Hey, just check this out. And I started listening to him. I was like, this is just like, it's just different. You know what I mean? It's like very different type of tone. It's, it's very catchy. So I could see even, you know, after the Beatles have gone away, still people will be fans of them just because of the level of quality music that they put out. Oh yeah. I definitely have a similar story of, you know, I didn't grow up as a Beatles fan. I really didn't discover the Beatles until probably in high school. Um, I had a really close friend of mine whose dad was really into the Beatles and he was into the Beatles and I would go start going over to his house and hanging out and he would just play me these Beatles albums. And, and I was mind blown as to how innovative they were and how even ahead of their time, how ahead of their time, but how ahead of like even music was at that time. Um, the things they were doing, it was just, I mean, it's, it's perfect. I mean, if, if I had to only choose one recording artist to listen to for the rest of my life, it would certainly be the Beatles catalog. Yeah, they definitely have a lot of, there's so much iconic tracks, iconic yeah. albums. So definitely something. And we'll probably be playing a Beatles song at the end of this podcast too, as well. Uh, do you have a, a favorite Beatles song, uh, Allison? Um, think I of... love Strawberry F- Strawberry Fields Forever. I love that. Ooh. It's a really good John Lennon track. That's the one we'll be doing. Strawberry yeah, Fields Forever, one. brother. Yeah. 